Well, here we are doing the first video of the channel. And instead of talking about homesteading or firecraft or survival or building shelters, or even food procurement and food preservation, I decided to start it off with something nice and easy. I picked up this new burns matic soldering iron uh, because I needed to make an extension for my trailer wiring. Unfortunately, they couldn't find a 25 foot wire with both the positive and negative ends and a wired in ground uh, anywhere locally or even on Amazon. So I wired this up myself. Unfortunately, I have no footage of, it, of doing this. Uh, so I'll be soldering up a couple of the scrap pieces of wire that I had left over and pointing out some of the tips and tricks that I learned along the way. Now the burns matic is a butane uh, similar to the Benzomatic series. Uh, this guy here is the first one that I've owned, but I've used him a few a few places on uh, job sites over at friends' houses and whatnot. I've always wondered if they would uh, hold up uh, opposed to using a, an electric model or a, um, a variable, uh, variable wattage electric model or maybe even a, a professional series. Uh, heck, for years I even used a $10 soldering iron from uh, Ace Hardware. Now this one here is a little bit more expensive. I got it for about $29. Uh, I got the carrying case with extra tips, the shrink wrap adapter, a little cleaning sponge which we'll be using throughout, and then there will be a uh, little protective cover in there as well. I'm going to set this off to the side. I also picked up for five or ten dollars a little bottle of butane here, five ounces. Uh, it only takes a second or two to fill up and overflows. And I haven't run out of this yet. I've done about five, ten minutes of continuous soldering and still did not need to fill it up. Uh, so it seems to have a, quite a bit of endurance. Using it's pretty simple. You press the little safety button on the side here, pull this trigger. See that lit? We're gonna put this switch on and release the trigger and it stays on. We can power this all the way up to four for heating up. And it's gonna take about 15-20 seconds to get up to temperature where it can actually melt our solder here. I'll be using two different types of solder. I have this uh, 330 seconds inch or two millimeter solder. It's a little heavier, a little thicker. Then I have the solder that came along with the kit. It's a little thinner, easier to melt, but when you're doing heavy connections, it can be handy having something with a little bit more oomph. So we'll be using this guy here primarily today. Looks like we're up to temperature. Now usually what I would do is just heat up the solder and try to roll it right into, right into the wire here using the uh, onboard acid or flux core. And that tends to work all right, but I find that it takes a while to get that solder to penetrate even when you have a nice hot soldering iron like this. You see we've got plenty of solder on the top here. But on the other side, we still haven't had full penetration. So we can hit it again, but then the wire starts to get a little dirty, our solder has lost its flux, and that can be frustrating. For a, beginning, uh, for a beginner, or an amateur like myself, that can, get, uh, that can get old really quick. So I'm gonna do instead, I'm gonna dip these wires in a little bit of flux paste. Uh, I picked this flux paste up on a, a plumbing aisle of a local hardware store. And you can see right here, soldering flux paste, usually used on uh, copper or, or uh, plumbing of sorts. One little can like that has lasted me about five years now. You can see it's barely used. Now that I've got my flux on, I'm gonna heat up a little more solder onto the soldering iron and then drop it right in. The flux allowing us to get rapid and full penetration of this wire. There we go, hit it again. I find it works best to preload the soldering iron here and then bring it to the wire. Instead of doing it both at the same time, it can be more difficult. If I just load the soldering iron bring a little bubble droplet over to the wire. With that flux usually has no problem at all. Now what we're doing here is called tinning the wires. 
uh, doing a slight layer on top, which makes it a lot easier for us to bring them around together. Careful on the heat there, they're going to be a little stiffer than before. What I'm going to do here is try to get both these wires together. And since they're already tinned, all that's required is a little heat. A little heat and a little finesse to get them to stick. I'm not very happy with that one here, so I'm going to bring it over unsolder it. Preload a little bit. So I have my droplet and bring that droplet right on top. Should melt right in nice and easy right there. Takes a second for it to solidify. During that time you don't want to move too much. There we go. Nice solid connection. There we go. I spent a little time on that once the wire started to melt a little bit, but it doesn't matter. We're going to be covering it in either shrink wrap or tape here by the end of the video. Same thing here, I'm going to load up the soldering iron. Get a nice solid droplet on the bottom of my iron. Put these side by side and use that droplet to melt those together. set this down here. Now I've created two complete loops. This is useless of course. There's nothing that can be done with this. Um, and heck we could even separate these two because the wires come apart. Uh, look we happen to have made some sort of chain link design. And that's completely accidental. Now if I had re if I had unsoldered these and added some shrink wrap I could bring it around and shrink it with a lighter or with the adapter. Uh, creating a nice seal over top. Uh, since these, I'm not going to be using these for anything, I'm just going to grab a little bit of electrical tape here. I find about three to four inches is enough. We'll start back here, nice and far. Now that flux can melt onto the wires and make it a little hard for it to stick. So I end up doing a wrap that takes on this two-dimensional flange feel to it just to make sure it's got a good enough good enough coverage of the whole connection. There you go. Make sure when you're grabbing your your uh, electrical tape on the inside of the roll there it says UL listed. See if you can see that on the camera. UL listed means it's rated for electrical use. Some of these off-brand ones that you find in the discount bins at auto stores don't have that rating. All right, that's an easy connection. Those are clean wires. Those are uh, using a little bit of soldering paste flux here. Using nice new solder and a nice hot gun. Easy day. Well, it can get a little bit more difficult when you start trying to improvise. Now here we have a little fuse block that I have. I'm using this for my motorcycle. And if I was going to add something onto this, we'd want to use these clips. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those clips, so I'm going to have to find a way to solder the wire directly on there. I do also like having a nice soldered fuse block. That way I know I'm not getting any bad connections over time. All I'm going to do is add a little bit of that flux onto it. That's a good amount. You only really need a tiny coating of this. We're going to set it up set my solder up. Now another reason I like using this two millimeter solder is because this stuff you can bend right over your work surface and it'll hold its position. Now we've got a little dirt in the end of the soldering iron and it's not going to be very easy to melt new solder. So this is where we're going to take that cleaning sponge. What it does is it takes the water and it evaporates it instantaneously and it steam cleans it very quickly. You don't need to dig it in there and drive it around. You just need to hit it a little bit until you see some shiny spots. Here we have some piece of debris on there too. I want to make sure I take that off. Once we have a shiny spot, we can go ahead and preload with that solder once again. 
Right. There we go. I'm going to melt a good sized droplet on into it this time. Just to the point where it's about to fall off. And it did fall off. So we're going to do it again just a little bit less than that. Bring it over and heat it up. The trick here is to heat up the metal enough that it takes the solder and creates that bond. All right, we got it. We got a good bond there, but not quite yet enough solder where I'm comfortable. I'll drop a second droplet on there. And remember folks, overkill, underrated. Now we got a good goblet on there. This little light that I have here, a little maritime light that pulled off the boat, uh, has very old wires, old corroded. Tried to hit them with a little bit of sandpaper ahead of time, but the downside is that they're just gonna have a hard time getting fresh solder. That's why I use a little bit extra flux, same, pla same plan here. Going to melt up a big droplet solder, gets it nice and hot, apply it onto the wire using that flux. Now if I angle this downward slightly, I'll get a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra solder right on the tip of the wire, which allows me to melt these directly into each other. Now this one here, it's going to take quite a bit of heat. You've got a lot of material there that needs to be heated up. Both here, this thicker wire, big glob, glob of solder, and then this piece of metal here with those two droplets that we added earlier. All of that's gonna be needed to heat up until it's liquid in order for it to properly adhere. So we're gonna have to apply a lot of, a lot of heat continuously until everything's liquid. This is where you need to have a little bit of patience. Because even with a hot soldering iron like this one, this can take a moment. You'll see the whole thing turn liquid eventually. And then I run the heat back and forth to make sure that we have a good solid bubble. And there we have it. You see the slight color change as it comes down in temperature. Right. Now there's one other thing that can happen to you when doing this is you can do too much solder. And I know you're thinking, hey, you said overkill is underrated. How can you have too much solder? Well, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate it right now. I'm going to heat up a bunch. And make this so that we have a big liquidy mess here we have a, a big gob goblet gobule gobule not goblet here we have a large amount of solder congregating underneath and it's starting to cause some issues and it drip down on other connections I'm gonna preload this desoldering pump get it nice and liquid and it sucks away that excess solder. You see? Almost completely gone there. It leaves some on the surface. Uh, and for these applications, this really isn't uh, a very important thing to have. Uh, I find this most useful when doing any circuitry or circuit board work where you start to solder one connection, it bleeds over to four, uh, and all of a sudden you've got a dead short. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll preload this so you push out the old solder that we just pulled out. Good and cool to the touch now. That's all solder that we just sucked away from that guy. And you heat up your uh, four or five connections that you've muddled up and pull away all that solder all at once. A very handy tool, a lifesaver when working with small electronics. Here with this bigger stuff, I, I wouldn't mind just knocking off the extra solder or using it. Would it be any problem at all? I would recommend to have a little bit of shrink wrap on here, slide it up over the connection, heat it up and have a nice solid waterproof connection because a solder joint is always going to last longer than a normal joint.
Now this guy's not going to do anything. There's absolutely no power connecting this does nothing. I'd have to add a 12 volt source in between and probably a longer wire. So I'm going to end up desoldering this later on after the video. Uh, but it's a good example of how you can make yourself good and nice, nice and good connection points uh, consistently. Um, that's not going to cause a problem over time. Personally, when I'm doing my soldering, I'm always making sure that I'm covering it up nice and tight. I'm uh, using that shrink wrap, using a little bit of that tape. Uh, and I like to have all of my connection points soldered, especially in working with trailers or small ATVs or something that rattles around a lot. Uh, anything else other than soldering is just not going to hold up over time. Well, thanks for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed it, maybe learned something. Uh, feel free to comment down below, like, subscribe, hit the bell, whatever it takes. Uh, you'll be seeing more videos here in the future, and we're going to be leaning a little more uh, survival and homestead for the next few weeks, uh, but you might see a soldering uh, video or a tutorial on how to use a piece of equipment as it comes up and becomes applicable. Alright, thank you and have a good night.